Life isn't easy. We all have moments of struggle, hopelessness, and despair. The day-to-day -day can begin to take its toll. And before we know it, we're consumed, overwhelmed by stress, surrounded by fear, unable to see the light through the darkness. It's no wonder we lose our joy and forget what peace actually feels like. But there is a way, a way for hope to break through our walls, a way for our faith to be renewed, a way for comfort to surround us. We can once again feel the light shine brightly on our face. We can experience the warmth of God's love and watch the darkness be overcome. For it's in the light of Jesus we find peace. Well, we are in a series right now that is called The Missing Peace. How many of you like God's peace to be evident in your life? How many of you know when you do not have that peace? Yeah, we know when we don't have it, and we know when we do have it. And there's so much going on in the world and so much going on in our lives. And yet we realize while we're here on this earth, we're going to have both joy and sorrow in our lives. They travel together. And if you're going to be one of those that think that your life is going to be all joy, rainbows and roses, then you're going to be disappointed. But if you're thinking that life is going to be also all sorrow and thorns and things, then you're going to end up being depressed. And we've got to realize that life is both of those things. We've got joys and we've got sorrows. Now, life is also involved with constant change and constant challenges. So we, because of that, we need God's peace. So I'm going to take just a minute and review because if you weren't here last week and David wasn't speaking directly to you because like I sat up here and I felt like he was just talking to me and all of y'all just happened to be in the room at the same time. But um, that's the moment that I feel like we need to kind of look at what happened. So let me review for just a moment. When something happens in our world and it's usually things or people or situation that happens on the outside. Okay, and we feel it, and where we deal with it, well, that happens on the inside. That's your soul. Remember, we talked about last week that we have more than just one part of our body. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we live inside of a body. Okay, and we said that last week your soul is where you think, where you feel, and where you decide. But remember, we're going to add, it's also where you imagine. So if my soul is cluttered, and if it's dark, or if it's broken, or maybe it's even toxic, then that's going to impact how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling, how I decide, how I remember, and even how I imagine. So I We've all got some soul work to do, myself included. David said it last week, just like your car engine needs to have oil in it, your soul needs to have peace in it. And we've got to keep a check on our soul. Got to find those dipsticks. <laughs> and we got to use those and check our own soul for our peace. And the only place that you're going to find that peace is not some store hidden away in Chinatown, where he shared my secrets last week. Um, but the only place we're going to find the real and perfect peace is in God. He is the only source of true and real peace. He is the only authorized dealer for peace. If you're in search and need peace, you need to get closer and closer to God. And he'll fill you with more than you need. Because he's a God that's more than enough. He knows what we need, but he gives more than what we need. So today, as we are digging deeper and finding that missing piece, I want us to take a moment and I want us to pray together. 
and ask for God to be right here with us and help us to know exactly what we need to hear so that in this world we can find his peace. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, we love you. We love you so much. And we praise you for all the things that you have done for us and all the things that you're doing that we don't even know about and all the things that are yet to come that will reflect glory upon your name. We thank you. Thank you right now for your sweet spirit, your presence right here in this room. And we're opening up our hearts and we want to be vulnerable to you. We ask that you would speak to all of your sons, speak to all of your daughters today. Help us to hear what you want us to hear. Help us to hold it and hide it in our hearts and to stand strong in the fact that you have called us your children. You've set us apart to be your very own. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I, I misplaced my other microphone <laughs> from last week. It's called Mobile Church, right? Uh, hey, we're glad that you're here today. Man, I'm just so looking forward to uh, what God wants to do today in our lives and how he wants to help us as we uh, search for the missing peace, right? We all need more peace. You need more peace in your life? <laughs> well, life conditions in life, outcomes in life, can I tell you that they're all directional? So my life, your life, is going in a certain direction. All right, last week we had Auto Mechanics 101. Today we're having directional uh, 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 instruction, right? Uh, outcomes in life, situations in life. In fact, uh, a lot of our outcomes in life are actually predictable because of the direction that we're going. I won't get too much in your business, but, uh, you know, I'll get into my business, right? Health outcomes, direction that you're going, right? If you're eating a bag of Doritos and a box of, box of cookies and, you know, all of that kind of stuff, it's not helping, right? You're going in the wrong direction. And uh, I'm speaking to myself, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, relationship outcomes, financial outcomes. A lot of these are very predictable because of uh, uh, our, the direction that we're going. So we can kind of know the outcome by the direction that we're going, the practices, the patterns that you're living. And, and eventually those things are going to take you somewhere. The Bible talks a lot about this. It talks about paths and journeys and practices and disciplines and and then the bible has this big word that's not very popular anymore but it's called repent when dominic i'll tell this because he's not here when dominic <laughs> was little he he because like hey his daddy's a preacher his granddad was a preacher at the church we were at and so he he would go home and uh of course you know, grandma and grandpa gave him all the stuff, right? Because that's what grandparents are supposed to do. And so he had like a little mini uh, amp that he could use for a guitar. And then he had a microphone and he had like a, a big long cord for it. And he would walk up and down with that microphone and he would act like he was preaching. <laughs> and then he would look and he'd go, puppet! <laughs> and he'd point his finger out. He, he, he didn't get repent yet. He just had puppet, right? But the word repent actually means for us to change our direction, right? So maybe y'all wouldn't be as offended if we said, hey, everybody, we need to change direction. <laughs> that repent has like an old school uh, church feeling to it. But, but, but repent, we got to change direction. We're going the wrong way, so we've got to turn our hearts We've got to turn our minds. We've got, to, we've got to change direction and turn around because our outcome is not going to turn out good by the way that we're going. So we're talking about the direction we're going and how we're going to have peace in our lives. 
If we're going to have peace in our lives, we've got to be headed in the right direction for peace. Are you with me? Oh, can I get a better amen than that? <laughs> the truth is, what you do day by day takes you to your future. The choices, the decisions, the things that you do day by day takes you to where you're going. So, uh, you know, uh, check out this map. I think I got a picture of a map. Okay, yeah, there we go. It's, uh, it's, it's, by the way, this is a directional map, right? So I picked two cities, Orlando, because we're close, Miami, because, come on, welcome to Miami, right? <laughs> if you leave from Orlando and you get on the turnpike and you drive about three hours and 35 to 40 minutes, uh, you should not be surprised when you pull into Miami. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You get in the car, you're going a certain direction. You shouldn't be surprised when you get there. If you get on the turnpike in Orlando and drive that, that distance, you shouldn't be surprised when you pull into Miami because life is directional. If I'm going to uh, in the right direction, I should get where I'm headed. Now, if I was to drive three hours and 35 to 40 minutes north, Guess what? There's no expectation that after that amount of time, I'm going to end up in Miami. No, I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to get there that way. Psalm 34, verse 14 says this, Turn away from evil and do good. Right? Seek peace and pursue it. All of these words, I, I put them in yellow there. They're directional words, right? Turn away, seek, pursue. It's, it's, it's directional. And it's basically saying, reroute your life. How many of you have ever used some sort of GPS? I'm keeping that theme going right here today, directional. You ever use GPS? Back in the day, they used to have this thing when we lived in North Carolina that you could buy at Best Buy. It was called a Garmin. Y'all remember them? You had a little sticky thing you put on the, you know, front of your dashboard, and it had, you know, a module you could buy, and you put it in your car, and, and, and it would give you directions when you put in where you wanted to go. Now most of the new cars have that built into the vehicle, right, in that smart computer, and some of y'all got that big screen on there that gives you directions as to where you're supposed to go, and, and pretty much all of our, our smartphones now have all kinds of apps for direction uh, and, and, and getting you from one place to the other. Most of them talk to you, right? You, you get to pick which voice you get to hear. Y'all, don't, They don't have like southern voice on there. Y'all need to go to the left down there. <laughs> no, it's more like, you know, British or Michelle likes the Australian I think she has an Australian guy on hers. I have a British woman, so I don't get confused when I'm getting directions that it's a woman telling it to me, right? <laughs> Just trying to be funny, y'all. <laughs> that one didn't land so well today. <laughs> I got better ones, y'all. I got better coming. <laughs> uh, sometimes y'all appreciate this because sometimes it can get really annoying when the directions keep coming. Like sometimes I know, like, no, that's not the way to go. And, like, some roads, like, I mean, they, I, not all, all of them have, like, Ernie Caldwell all the way down to 1792, you know, on the direction. It does, so it looks like you're driving in a field when you're looking at the little picture. Uh, and it can got, get kind of real annoying because sometimes it's like, you know, it'll tell you, uh, and it'll tell you, like, tur turn, turn left now, right? And you're like, wait, what, what did you tell me earlier? I could have got it, right? Um, quick, uh, this is a funny story. I'll tell you this one real quick. Back, back when I was in North Carolina at our church there, uh, they gave me the job for a while to drive the senior ladies van to pick them up and drop them off for church. Well, nobody gave me like a route. This is before GPS, before cell phone much was really, I mean, I think I had a bag phone, uh, <laughs> but 
you know, it's just you didn't have that kind of stuff. And they said, it's okay, you, if you can get to the first lady's house, she'll tell you how to get to the rest of the houses to pick up. Okay. <laughs> so I got to the first lady, and then she told me, like, how to get to the next place. And, you know, on your um, GPS, it'll say, in, you know, 300 feet, turn right. In 100 feet, turn right. Turn right. Well, she skipped all that, how many feet? We'd get there, and she'd go, turn right. And I, <laughs> yeah, like whipping it around. And then you could hear him in the back. I knew he was driving too fast. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just kind of like, oh, Jesus, help me, right? Uh, but, but, you know, the things... <laughs> The things we've got to, to do, we have to be going in the right direction. And today I want to talk about levels of our peace. Peace is a huge theme in the Bible, both Old and New Testament. So I want to look at some verses uh, that talk to us today about levels of peace and how this relates to direction. And so here's the first level of peace, and that's this, no peace. No peace. Sometimes you've been there, right? Where there was just no peace. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22. We read this one last week. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. And we said that that Old Testament Hebrew word for wicked is wrong or twisted like a plant gets planted. And then all of a sudden the, 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 the stalk that comes out starts to twist. And, and so the, the direction has been altered and it's wrong. And because of that, there is no peace. So if wicked is wrong, then you know that God is right. And God's ways are right for us. And so if we want peace, uh, and, and, and as, we, uh, as a reminder, there, uh, you know, if we don't have God's ways and God's directions, there's not going not gonna to be any peace. Come on, remember, peace, it, it doesn't grow here. <laughs> you, can't, you can't find it here. The only place that you can find peace is from God. So we're going to have to do things God's way, and we're going to have to go God's direction if we want peace in our lives. There's always two ways to do anything, right? There's God's ways, and then there's all the other ways. Isaiah 58, verse 9, they don't know where to find peace and what it means to be just and good. They have mapped out crooked roads, and no one who follows them knows a moment's peace. See, we can try to justify and argue, and our culture does that really well, right? But if you take the wrong way, there is no peace. You can rationalize, you can argue, you can make uh, all the points that you want to make, but, and, and, and you know, if I just, y'all, I feel it in my heart. If I just go north, I'm going to end up in Miami. You can trust that, you can believe that, you can feel that all you want, but you're going to be wrong because you can go on and on and on about what you think and what you feel and be going the wrong way and not end up where you want to be at peace. Isaiah 32, verse 17, and where there's right, there'll be peace. So the first one of these is no peace, levels of peace, no peace. Here's the second one, and it's just peace. Peace is incredible. Our peace comes from peace with God through what Jesus has done in our lives. And as a result of that, I get peace from God. It's a brand of peace that will actually guard my heart. It will guard my mind. But can you imagine if peace is suddenly extracted out of you? Some of us need to pause even in this moment right now and give thanks and praise for the great gift of peace that we have received. John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither, neither let it be afraid. Jesus says, peace I give you. And then he goes on and he says, my peace I give to you. Come on, that's good news for us. Jesus is about to leave at this point. He's talking to the disciples. He's going to leave earth. And he's saying to them, the peace that I've been using while I've been here on this earth, I'm about to give it to you. See, in heaven, you're not going to need any peace. Because heaven is already perfect peace. And nothing enters that will disrupt that peace. All of the promises uh, of that peace in scripture are, are, are about for our life here on this earth. So we need peace here. We need peace now. And Jesus says, I'm going to give you the peace that I used. I don't know about you, but I think that peace served him pretty well. And I think it can serve us well. It's peace that he gives. It's a gift. He is the prince of peace. And this is actually the minimum level that we can have in our lives, that we, that we can have. And it's his peace. And it's incredible. And it, it's, it's noticeable. It, it makes a massive difference in our lives. And are you ready for this? It's yours for the asking it's yours for the asking. So let me ask you, have you ever lost your peace? Here's the greatest thing you need to understand. It's refillable. Come on, it's refillable. I love it when we go to a restaurant and it's, the drinks are refillable. <laughs> you know, I've been to a few places over the years that like, you get, if, you, if you get something besides water, you pay for every one that you get, right? This is a gift that's been given, and it is refillable for our lives. So I'm thankful for the peace of Jesus that we have today. Levels of peace. We got no peace. We've got peace. Here's another level. We can have great peace. Great peace in our lives. Psalm 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. That word stumble in the Old Testament Hebrew means to be tipped over or to be easily offended. Come on, I've never seen people as easily offended as they are in our culture right now. Would you agree with me? Yeah. I mean, you know what we need. We need a big dose of peace in our lives. We need some great peace in our lives. You know, people are going to be people, right? When we lived in Auburndale and we were part of the team at the, uh, the, the church there, Life Church back then, uh, there was a, a, a pastor, uh, Father Bud. Uh, he was the, the pastor of the Episcopalian church there in town. It was like a 150-year-old church. It was beautiful. You go into that place, outside, inside. Father Bud, we had him preach at our church one year for Christmas. And he, he, he was like, there's people inside of people. I was like, preach on, brother. Because <laughs> that's the truth. There's always going to be people being people, right? We're, we're, we're always going to be people that are imperfect, people that have sin in our lives. And sinners will continue to sin. But we need great peace so we aren't constantly walking around upset and easily offended by everything. Let's look at Psalm 119, verse 165 again. They kept it up on the screen. Great peace have those who love your law. And nothing causes them to stumble. That would, the word great means abundant, multiplied. And it gives this idea of overflowing peace in our lives and that word peace there is shalom which is means complete peace it is to be safe to be well to be happy to be whole great peace have those who love your law this is to love like you love a dear friend 
like you would do anything for this friend. It's this loyalty, this, this committed love that you have. It's a, a strong emotion, a strong love. Those who love your law. I lost some of y'all right there, right? Law. <laughs> because as humans, we don't like people to tell us what to do, right? Law, that is precepts and statutes and teaching. And the root of this word actually means this, to point out as if aiming the finger to teach. Yo, I point sometimes when I'm speaking, right? I was like, hey. <laughs> right? Right? I'm not trying to point you out, go like, Ur. I got to adopt the, the Disney, whatever it is, like two fingers over here, and you know, or, or like the, uh, the ladies in the airplanes, their exits here, here, and here. <laughs> All right, they get the two fingers, right? So nobody feels like they're getting pointed at. But sometimes we need to be pointed at. And we need the law to show us, to say, hey, you, it's, it's you that I'm speaking to. And, and In other words, this means I love God telling me what to do. No amens right there. <laughs> but I, I want to get to the place where I love him pointing me in the right direction. Right? Great peace have those who take God's direction where he points us to go. Great peace have those who love God pointing it out to them, showing them the way. It's a directional thing. We've got to get to the place where we love God telling us what to do because, can I tell you, he's never going to steer you wrong. Hey, before GPS and all of that, right, you had these big maps you kept in the glove compartment and you pulled them all out. Some of the young people, y'all don't know nothing about having to pull out a map and figure it out. And, or, or you stopped at a service station, right? Because it wasn't just a gas station, it was a service station. They checked the dipstick, they washed your windows, they filled up the gasoline, they checked the tire pressure. It was a service station. And in addition to all of those automobile things that they did, they would give directions to people, right? You pull in through a town, you're not sure, you pull the service station, hey, I'm trying to get so-and-so, which way do I go? Well, you get on this road right here, <laughs> you go down past to where they used to have the Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> right? I don't know where they used to have it. You go down, you turn left, <laughs> you won't miss it, Right? And you're like, what direction? Sometimes I've done that, and I got more lost trying to figure out where I was going from what they said. Can I tell you today, God's not going to steer you wrong. <laughs> so relationships and the day-to-day, -day, how we handle our finances, how we handle and deal with temptation, how we deal with just about anything in this life. I'm telling you, God will give you the good direction. He'll steer you the right way. He'll point you in the right way. We've got to love God, and we've got to love Him telling us which way to go so we can experience this level of peace, and our peace can rise up within us. Isaiah 54, verse 18, I mean, uh, 13 says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Come on, y'all. I want my, my son to have great peace. I want your children to experience great peace in their life. My son turns 20 in three weeks, three weeks from today. And I feel like Michelle and I did the best that we could on this, but I know that we probably could have done better. So we pray for our kids, y'all. And, and, and if you still got kids that are under your roof, or maybe you got grandkids that are under your roof, people, you know, children within your reach, they need to be taught about the Lord. Church is going to be your biggest ally in that. Can I just brag for a moment? Jeff and Faith Desort give their time every Sunday. Not to babysit your children. Come on, y'all. They are in there teaching them 
God's Word, teaching them about who God is and how God can touch their lives at their age. Kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade, and, and, and beyond for some of them. They, they, that, that God can touch them and help them, and they could know God even at that age. They are doing an amazing job teaching our children. They are an advocate for you to help you to, to, to teach your kids about God. But guess what? We only get about an hour a week. So if you're trusting in Jeff and Faith as great as they are, it's not going to make it. Come on, it's, it's, it's on us to do our part. Uh, and, and, and Let me meddle for a minute. It's not your job to be your kid's best friend. Part of your job is to point them the way that they should go and help them become an adult that has peace in their life. Some of them to have great peace because the opposite is true. If you don't teach them about the Lord, they're not going to have great peace. And we're living in a, in a, in a time, I, I just can't even imagine this happening, but it does, where kids are so anxious and depressed. We're in a culture that is magnifying that, where, you know, they, 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 they got to have coping mechanisms at five and six years old. Come on, y'all. When I was five and six, the only thing I was coping with was whether Tom and Jerry was on when I wanted to watch it. Right? <laughs> Come on, and, and so we're living in that time of world, and, and, and our kids need peace, a peace that comes from God. Great peace will be the peace of your children if they're taught of the Lord. So here's, we've got no peace, we've got peace, we've got great peace, and then we've got perfect peace. This is a whole nother level, y'all. Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4 says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. So go back to the Old Testament Hebrew, and perfect peace is actually the same word repeated. It is shalom, shalom. It is uh, literally uh, like a literary device or method in the Hebrew to create this very huge emphasis uh, that, that is, you, you got to do what this verse says. God will give you all that shalom fully implies, that you can have a perfect peace. But follow that verse because it's a, it's a little bit conditional. Look at verse 3 in reverse. If you look at it in reverse, it says, because you trust in him, you keep your mind stayed on him. He keeps you in perfect peace. I brought a bottle of water with me today. Help illustrate this for a minute. I got smart water because you are what you drink. I'm putting... I'm putting I'm putting myself out there. I'm going to I'm going to believe for this, right? So if this bottle represents you, right? Let me turn it where you can see it like this without the words. If this bottle represents you in your life. Let's say this is you and your soul is full of peace. Just like this bottle is full of water. Your soul is full of peace. You've accumulated some great peace in your life. God will keep you in the fullness, that peace, peace, if you keep your lid, keep your lid on. If you keep your mind stayed on him. You get where I'm going? Why would we want to do that? Because I'm trusting in him. So if I trust in him, I'm keeping my lid on. Y'all ready for me to take this off and start slinging it on somebody, right? Not going to do it. <laughs> Michelle's about the only one I can reach, right? <laughs> if I trust in him, I'm going to keep my mind stayed on him. He will keep me full of perfect peace. Y'all know sometimes life goes a little sideways, doesn't it? 
This is no time to lose your peace. It's no time to lose your lid when things go sideways in your life. Sometimes you'll find yourself upside down in life. Certainly not the time to lose your lid when your life is turned upside down. It's these times sideways and upside down that I have to trust in God. The most. I've got to trust in him because certainly when things are going well and life is going straight up and down, like it's easy to stay full of peace then. But it's when those moments come that like out of nowhere, just things go sideways. I better keep my lid on. When my world turns upside down and what I had no idea would happen happens and things like are going against the way I want them to go, I got to keep the lid on so that I can stay in perfect peace. I've got to keep my mind stayed on Him. It's these times sideways and upside down that I trust in God. The enemy will do everything he can to get you to try to take your lid off. Come on. And be thinking about every other thing than you ought to be thinking about. You know what will happen if you do that? You're going to lose your peace. Right? Your peace will be all over the place. And guess what? You'll not be any good to anybody. And y'all know, how many know that when it leaks, it leaks fast? (laughs) If I turn this knob and take this off, this stuff will run out in a matter of seconds. So what do we do? I got to trust the Lord. And because you trust in the Lord, you keep your mind stayed on Him. But pastor, everything's going sideways. Hey, that's the time to keep your lid on. That's the time to trust. What you're going through, you're going to get through. It's just part of the ride. Part of the ride. What you have to do, no matter what you're going through, is to keep your mind stayed on him. And when you do that, he will keep you in perfect peace. Listen, here's the good news for you today. Maybe some of you, you've lost some of your peace. Maybe your peace has leaked out some this week. You can refill. You can refill. We talk, we'll talk about that some more in another week in this series. So here we go. I got, I got one more. You've got no peace. We've got peace. We've got great peace. We've got perfect peace. And here's the last one. We got borrowed peace. You can be around somebody who carries peace and you can get some peace off of them. Right? In the, in the same way, you can be around somebody who's anxious Somebody who's negative, somebody's fearful, and you can get some of that off of them too. One of my pastors, he he says it this way, there's four types of people. There's adders, there's subtractors, there's multipliers, and there's dividers. Adders and multipliers, they, they, they carry peace, right? And you need people around you that carry peace because sometimes you're going to need to borrow a little peace from somebody that's with you, somebody that's that's, that's with you, helping you. You got to be careful because other people, they're not carrying peace and uh, they're carrying a lot of other stuff. Borrowed peace is an incredibly powerful kind of peace that you can experience. One of the best advertisements for a life of God is a person who carries peace and can share that peace with those around them. So we need to be those kind of people that carry the peace. And we don't leak our peace, we just share it when others need it. And then we get refilled ourselves. As I close this morning, what our broken and hurting world needs are some people who walk around with God and carry His peace. That's why we need to carry the peace of God. It's not just a matter of you having peace for yourself, but it's also a matter of you carrying peace 
so that people can see and want not just the peace, but want the God of peace that's inside of you. Come on, why don't we pray together this morning? Father, we love you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus into this world. We are so thankful that we can experience peace in our lives because of the work Jesus did on the cross for us. Lord, I'm, I'm praying for peace right now, Lord. Peace in our lives today. Would you give us your perfect peace and let us be carriers of peace to those around us in our world, in our community, in our jobs, in our neighborhood every day. I pray this. In Jesus' name. Hey, as you just keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a moment, we're going to continue in a moment of prayer. And maybe today you're here and you've been struggling with no peace. Can I tell you, peace is found in God alone. And the good news today is that we can receive the peace of God by opening, and opening up our lives to Jesus. Maybe you've never done that before. Or maybe somehow you walked away from a relationship with God. And, and if you did kind of a, a soul check today, you'd say, I'm really low on God's peace because I haven't walked with Him. Today I want you to know that God loves you. He's got a plan for your life. Our sin separates us from God and His purpose, but God brought a solution to the problem of sin through His Son, Jesus Christ. He came to this earth. He lived a, a perfect, sinless life. He died a horrific death on the cross, but three days later, He rose again. He conquered death and hell and the grave. And because of that, we can have peace in our lives. Come on, He did His part. And now He just asks you to do your part which is just to respond to Him. And this morning, if that's you, just a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to pray that prayer with me. We're just going to invite Jesus Christ into our lives. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or, or come forward right now. This is just a personal decision I'm inviting you to make right where you're seated. But I do want you to do one thing, and that in just a moment, I want to invite you to lift your hand if that's you so I can see you to pray for you. Just We're going to put it up and put it right back down. And I believe as you make that bold declaration saying, yeah, that's me, I'm receiving Jesus today. As you pray this prayer, as the Bible says, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. He's going to come into your life and transform you by His power, and He's going to fill you up with his peace so this morning I just want to encourage you right where you're at if that's you you need to invite Jesus into your life when I count to three I want you to just lift your hand up you can put it right back down you ready this is your moment one two three come on lift up the hand right now yeah thank you thank you anybody else just say that's me I need to receive Jesus today put it up put it right back down thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I just want you to invite this prayer, uh, to pray this prayer, invite you to pray this prayer with me. If you lifted your hand, or maybe you didn't lift your hand, but you, you know in your heart you need to pray this. Come on, everybody, you could just pray this prayer with me right now. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sin. Please forgive me. Come live inside me. Make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I make you my Lord, my Savior, my soon coming King. I give you my life. Thank you for the hope that I have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that are making that decision today.